Hey everyone, we're going to be doing an awesome spin on the catalyzed reaction of hydrogen peroxide with yeast and creating what is commonly known as the pasta rocket. And the reason why it's called a pasta rocket is that it is simulating this idea that we can use a fuel that is not necessarily a what's more commonly known as a liquid or a gas. For example, we put gasoline in our car, that's a liquid, but then it gets vaporized and it's a gas and that burns and gives us a lot of power. We can also use solid form as our fuel source. And so hence the term pasta, pasta is going to be the solid form of the fuel that's used, but it is getting injected by oxygen gas, pure oxygen gas. And so this is our source. We've got hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, can get broken down and does naturally break down to become water and oxygen gas. But that happens really slowly over the course of years. And I will say that um, we've got it in a dark container to keep it more stable. That's why they're brown. Okay. But if we put them in the presence of a catalyst, then it breaks down very quickly and you get a lot of oxygen gas coming out at once. So one of the ways you can do that is with a less common compound, potassium iodide. And that's the way a lot of those elephant toothpaste experiments are done. But when we're at home, we oftentimes don't have something like potassium iodide. So we can use something a lot more common and that is yeast. And so we've got chemistry happening. We've got this idea of the hydrogen peroxide breaking down into water and oxygen. There's a chemical reaction. We can also talk about catalysis, how catalysts cause chemical reactions to happen faster. There's another concept we can talk about by adding something. And if our something, our catalyst is yeast, then that allows us to fold in a little bit of biology that yeast is a live creature. It is a live active organism and it cat catalyzes that reaction. It does a lot of other things too, but um, we bring in a little bit of, and thank you yeasts for sacrificing yourselves for science and to teach science. Okay, and then we have this whole idea of combustion. And so combustion reactions, that's when you have a carbon-based fuel, you combine it with the oxygen. Hmm, where are we gonna get the oxygen? Perhaps by catalyzing the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide? Yes, so carbon-based compound, and if it's combusting, or in other words, burning with oxygen, then we can get carbon dioxide and water and a lot of energy comes out of that. Okay, we've got heat energy. And, uh, and so when we burn something, we're seeing that combustion happening. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this reaction. So as you can tell with a pasta rocket, there's so much science that you can talk about. And that especially if you've got, and what we're gonna see with our pasta, if you have a flame coming out of it, then that flame can actually cause thrust that would push a rocket. This is not going to move. We're just going to see that burning happening. There's not gonna be a rocket. It's not anything that gets propelled. So this is also a reaction that you can do. This is a project that you can do where yes, there's going to be fire. So you need to have safety precautions. You need to get goggles on to protect your eyes, but you don't need to worry about anything flying across the room. Okay, so it's still cool, although we don't get anything like propelling and possibly causing injury that way. Very fun reaction to do. And it just needs a few things. And one of them is you will wanna have some kind of mason jar with the lid, not with the screw top. I'll talk about safety with that, but you do just wanna have this lid so it sits on it. Okay, just like that. And you will, of course, I keep showing these, you'll need your hydrogen peroxide, you'll need your yeast, and also to have handy, aluminum foil can help seal between the, I also have my pasta here, your pasta, and because um, it's going to be sitting on top of the lid. I'm gonna show you all of this, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set it up. And um, I think that's it. You know, I just had to mention this. I have this old school Bunsen burner that is horizontal. 
So back in the day, this is truly vintage. Check this out. Um, back in the day, um, you'd hook up your gas and the um, oxygen source, and then you would light it and the flame would actually go that way. So you don't see these around very often anymore. <laughs> but in any case, um, our flame is going to be going up vertically. All right. So let's get going. I'm going to show you step by step how to put together a pasta rocket. All right. In order to make our pasta rocket, we're going to be using um, one of these mason jars and the top to it. Okay. Not not the screw around part that holds it in there tightly. We actually do want to allow this top to be able to release itself so we don't build up pressure. Um, that could be dangerous. So it's only gonna be the mason jar and this lid. And what we wanna do is get a small hole poked in this lid. So you can use a drill, or if you're like me, you just go caveman style. And I'm just gonna use a nail with a wood backing and just pound a little hole in there. All right, and that should be good enough. We just wanna be able to, inside the jar, have the oxygen build up in here and then be able to escape just through that small hole. The next part that we want to be able to do is to be able to have some kind of pasta that has a hole in the middle and we want to be able to set it up top here. Now if you have penne, it's at an angle and so that's when we would want to try to get the bottom of it as flat as possible. Um, there are other types of pasta that, um, that are flat at the bottom and so you could also find those as well. Um, but that should work. I'm going to actually cut both sides just so that it's pretty much flat on both ends. Okay. And then we are going to want this piece of pasta to sit here. Now, ideally, if it was perfectly flat, we could kind of set it there and balance it there. But that's going to be really hard to do. So this is where we could just grab a piece of aluminum foil. And I'm just grabbing a strip here. And we can use this to help us kind of uh, keep this little guy balanced around on the top there. So that can really help. It's essentially just making a little platform there. I can even tear off some of that. And the main thing is that we are going to keep it there. That's going to stay there and that it's going to be right over that hole. So you could even use this nail as a guide to make sure that it is indeed right above that hole that you punched through. Okay, so mine is, it's right there. And you can also use this aluminum foil to really keep it there. You don't wanna use anything like tape or plastic or anything that um, is really gonna be bad if it catches on fire. Okay, so we're just gonna use metal and glass and this pasta that's gonna be the solid fuel for our pasta rocket. All right, so I ended up getting a larger piece so that it could drape on both sides of the lid, not going all around it, not trying to seal up the whole thing, but just allowing it to be really tight around the pasta as much as you can, and then um, that it's draping over so that it keeps it in that place. I still have that nail guide in there, and um, that's going to just make sure that that pasta is right above the hole. Okay, now it is all prepared and ready to go for us putting in the hydrogen peroxide and some yeast.
Hey, I hope you liked it. I was, I was keeping silent because I was just enjoying the moment. <laughs> and if you listen really closely, you could totally hear the flame just like going through there. So there's your pasta rocket. And I would say um, if it doesn't happen the first time, just keep trying. We always have to troubleshoot these things. A lot of times it has to do with there's a crack somewhere. And so the oxygen is leaking out somewhere. So not as much as going up through the pasta. Um, maybe the ratio of how much of the yeast you're putting in with the hydrogen peroxide, all of those kinds of things. So whenever you do have something that doesn't go exactly as planned, don't be discouraged. Try it again. That's what science is really all about. And that's one of the things I do with my kids in my program, Science Rockstar Kids. We are trying all sorts of different things. And in fact, sometimes the kids are like, well, what if we put in food coloring or what if we did it at this different ratio, or different temperature? Why not? So try different things like that and you will make new discoveries. And really, when you get that curiosity, and then you get to try to answer it right away. It just, oh man, it just helps those kids get more and more excited about the possibilities for the future and different things that they can do. So it's all about science and being creative and sparking that curiosity and just wondering out loud, what if? All right, so hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day and I will see you next time. And don't forget to make time for science.